1 Peter chapter 1. The title of the message is this, Things that are temporary and things that are eternal. Things that are temporary and things that are eternal. Uh, the last couple of weeks we've talked a lot, more than we normally do, about money. We've talked about finances. We've talked about stewardship. And, uh, and honestly, as I've said before, I don't preach much. Maybe I don't preach enough on finances and stewardship. The reason I don't is I, I've, I've seen too many of these fake ministries where uh, the, the, the preacher's trying to fleece the flock, where they're, they're just trying to, to get people uh, to give, and, and uh, it's just a fundraising campaign all the time. And, it's, yeah. and they're not about winning souls. They're not about Jesus Christ. They're not about the Word of God. They use the Bible. They use Jesus for their own purposes. And that's not what we want to do. Uh, we want to uh, use our finances for Jesus' purpose. That's what we want to do. And so once a year, this time of year, we do focus more on, uh, on stewardship. We focus on uh, giving and on uh, providing the need. And so we had a stewardship dinner yesterday. A great meal. Thank God for the ladies who prepared the meal, who served the meal, and uh, folks who were involved in the help. I thank God for the great uh, amount that was uh, pledged above and beyond tithes and offerings, over $12,000. Praise the Lord. That's a lot of money. And uh, praise God for that. And, but I want us to remember, I want us to, when we're going through this whole thing about stewardship, I want us to remember why we do that. Why, why do we talk about money? I mean, what, why do we even worry about giving? Why does it matter that we have a building? Why does it matter that we run buses? Why does it matter that we buy gospel tracts? Why does it matter that we support missionaries? Why do we do all that? Well, the reason we do all that is that this life isn't all there is. The things in this life are temporary. They're temporary. You know what that means? It means they don't last. How many of you remember Hugo's? Hugo's were temporary. They don't last. They didn't last. You don't, you don't find a classic Hugo running around on the, on the road anymore. You know why? Because they don't last. Uh, things are temporary. Things of this life don't last. But things that really matter are eternal. You know what really matters? What really matters is where you'll spend eternity. That really matters. Amen. You'll spend eternity either in heaven or in hell. That really matters. That really matters. Your soul is valuable. Your life is valuable. That's Amen. the stuff that really matters. Things that are temporary and things that are eternal. I want to read much of 1 Peter 1 a little bit at a time, though. Let's begin in 1 Peter 1, verse 1. Peter writes, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Folks, that's the only Amen. way you get saved is through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. The waters of baptism can't wash away your sins. Sitting in a church pew can't wash away your sins. Doing good works can't wash away your sins. The only thing that washes away your sins is the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. The sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. The Bible says grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. You can almost hear Peter's excitement. He's just saying, praise God for this. Amen. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to His abundant mercy hath begotten us again. You know what that means? It means He's given us new life. We're born again. Amen. When Jesus talked to Nicodemus, He said, Nicodemus, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, a young lady be born again, a young man, a young lady be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Right. Young ladies, young men, adults, if you're not saved, you won't see the kingdom of God. If you're not saved, you won't see the Lord Jesus Christ in heaven. You'll be separated from Him forever in hell. That's the reality of life. If you're not born again, you're lost and you need a Savior. And Jesus, the Bible says, that God hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. How are we saved? We're not saved through the waters of baptism. We're not saved through church. We're saved by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Notice to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that fadeth not away reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God 
through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Let's pray. Lord, speak to our hearts through your word. Lord, remove all the dross of this world that's in our minds today and help us to focus on your word. Help us, Lord, to listen to what your spirit has to say. Lord, I pray that you'll get people's attention. Lord, wake up folks from the, the doldrums of spiritual sleep and help them, Lord, to see the truth of your word this morning, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Temporary versus eternal. What are things in this world that are temporary? Notice verse uh, 6, the Bible says, Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. The first thing that's temporary, the treasures of this earth, they're temporary. When we talk about giving money for the stewardship banquet, uh, for, for, for this uh, building, the money we give, it's temporary stuff. Money talks. What does it say? It says goodbye. It does. It says goodbye. Uh, the Bible says riches make themselves wings. They fly away. Treasures are temporary. You know, some of you young people, I, I hope you will go get a job someday. I hope you'll work and earn your way in life. I hope you'll do that. I hope you won't depend on society to support you all your life. That, that, that's not the way it should be. Just because a lot of people do that doesn't make it right. In fact, the Bible still says if a man doesn't work, neither should he eat. The Bible still says that. But I hope you'll go get a job. But I hope you'll balance that with this thought that the treasures of this earth are temporary. So you can spend your whole life chasing another buck, chasing a, a dream job, uh, chasing the next nice car. And listen, you'll get a nice car, and guess what? It'll be nice, but about two, three years from now, you're going to see another one you want. Right. You know, I, I, uh, I tell my kids, and you've heard me say this, around Christmas time, they'll, they'll take the magazine articles, or the, the toy ads that come. And I did the same thing, you know, out of the newspaper. When you're a kid, you get a marker. You're like, I'm going to circle what I might want for Christmas. So you open that magazine article and, and uh, uh, get, you start, start circling stuff. And before you know it, you've circled the whole magazine. And, and you want everything in that magazine. You, you want a little bit more. You get what you want, but guess what? In a few more, uh, a few more weeks, you're going to want something else. Adults are no different. You get a car. You like the car. You love the car. You drive it. It's the coolest thing since sliced bread. And then you drive by somebody else's car. Now you want that car. Yeah. See, things, treasures of this life are so very temporary. Look at verse 18 of this chapter. It says, For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Listen, gold, silver, those things are corruptible. They're corruptible. Matthew chapter 6, verse 19. Let's look at this passage, please. Matthew 6, 19. Matthew 6, 19. Let's turn to that passage, please. Matthew 6, 19. Notice what the Bible says. Lay not up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth... Where, where, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Amen. Listen, the treasures of this life will corrupt. The gold, the silver. Uh, I, I remember in college, somebody gave me a nice suit. It was a Dillard's suit. How many of you know that's fancy clothes right there? Dillard's. Most of my stuff I get from GW. Goodwill, right? And uh, but this was a Dillard suit. It was fancy. It was pinstriped. And one day I went to the closet and I pulled it out and there were some holes right here. Right here on the cuff. Some holes, some white patches. And I looked down and I went, what in the world is that? You know what it was? Somebody tell me what it was. It was a moth. The moth liked my suit too. And the moth went and he ate holes in that suit. You know what? I, and I got thinking, what if I had paid 500 bucks for this suit? Man, I'd have been hot. I'd have been upset. I got a suit and this moth just ate a hole in my suit. Hey, didn't Jesus say that's the way treasures of this life are? They corrupt. They corrupt. That, that car, that set of wheels that you've just set your heart into, man, it's going to be a tin can holding tuna fish in a, few, in a little while. It's not going to last. 
This building, I thank God for this building. God gave us an amazing deal in this building. But folks, it is just a building. Right. It's just a building. Uh, the church is the people. We had church when we were sitting on a folding chair. I'm not saying I don't like padded views and air conditioning and, and uh, a, a big building. I like the building, but this building is temporary. Amen. What's eternal are the souls of men and women, boys and girls. The treasures of this life are so temporary. Notice it says, lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. The faster we can figure out that the treasures of this life are temporary, the sooner we can get on board with aligning our priorities the way they should be. Number two, I want you to see something else that's temporary. Look at 1 Peter chapter 1 again, please. 1 Peter chapter 1. Look at verse number 6. What else is temporary? Child of God, if you're a Christian, if you're saved, what else is temporary are your trials and your troubles. Listen, Christian, I'm not making light of your trials and your troubles. We all face them. Uh, every one of us could stand up here by the hour. We could. We could all stand up here by the hour and tell about our trials and troubles. And you know what would come of that? We'd go home all sad and depressed, wouldn't we? Right. We just, if we just focus on our trials and troubles, that's all we focus on. We're, we're not gonna we're not gonna do what we ought to do for God. Our trials and our troubles are real, and we ought to talk to bring them to God. The Bible says, casting all your care upon Him, for He careth for you. But folks, what we really need to do is get focused on the Lord. Because listen, our trials in this life as a Christian are temporary. They're temporary. Right. No matter what you're going through, as big, as painful, as, as, uh, as sad as a trial can be for a Christian, it's only temporary. It's only temporary. I want you to see what verse 6 says. Peter's writing to people who, let, let me explain who these people were. Many of them were literally being burned at the stake because they were Christians. They were literally being arrested and tied to a pole. And they were putting sticks around their feet. And they would say, recant, say that you don't believe in Jesus Christ. And they'd say, I'm not going to recant. And the church, the early church, saw many of their family members. They would literally take a fire and light those people and burn them to death. The Catholic Church did that, by the way, a lot to a lot of true believers. Right. It's a corrupt church. Right. It doesn't preach the truth. It's not true to the Word of God. Man. All religions don't lead to God. Well, they all lead to God, but in different ways. One leads to God as a Savior. One leads to Him as the judge. Right. And Catholicism leads to God as the judge. True. They burn people to death. They would murder and martyr them. And some of these Christians were suffering at the hands of wicked people like that. They were being burned to death. Even in our day and age, we don't know a lot about this in America because we don't face this in America. Thank God for the liberty we have in America. The liberty, the freedom we have. None of us had to come here today hoping the police weren't following us because we were going to worship Jesus Christ. None of us had to uh, come a few at a time like they do in other places where the lights are out and they just come one or two every other hour so as not to raise suspicions. And they come and they, they meet and they don't sing loud like we do. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. They, they sing in very quiet, hushed, whispering tones. Why? Because if they're, if they're found, they can be arrested and killed. Most of them don't have a Bible to carry to church. Most congregations around the world are lucky if they have one whole Bible. Right. And usually what they'll do is they'll tear a page out and they'll take that page home and they'll read it and they'll memorize it and read it and memorize it and hide it in their hearts and the next time they meet, they'll trade pages of the Bible. Amen. Doesn't that make you feel guilty when you got four, five, six Bibles and you haven't read one of them this week? Right. Wait, let me say that again. you got four, five, six Bibles at home and you haven't read one of them this week? Whoa, we're going to stand before God and give an account yes, for the liberty and the freedom we've had in America. We're going to give an account. And these people were suffering excruciating trials. They had seen family members burned to death because they stood for Jesus Christ. And we get bent out of shape if the preacher gets a little loud. We get bent out of shape if somebody looked at us funny or somebody didn't shake our hand. We get bent out of shape if, if, uh, if the uh, toilet paper was run the wrong way in the bathroom. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. <laughs> All right, how many of you wrote? No, I'm not doing that today. <laughs> Next week, 
We're going we're gonna to split the church. Half are going to sit over here. Half are going to sit over here. We get bent out of shape over the silliest stuff. We do. We got the wrong sauce on our sandwich. McDonald's, we're ready to throw a fit. Man, how dare they put mustard on my burger. Don't they know? I don't like mustard. We get mad about silly stuff. These people are being burned to death because they followed Jesus Christ. And Peter said, Christians, I know you've seen some horrible stuff. Christians, but can I tell you something? Your trials in this life, they're all temporary. They're all temporary. They're not going to last very long. Notice what he says. Verse 6, he says, Where you greatly rejoice, though now for a season. That means it's just going to last a little time. If need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, he was talking about a literal fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen ye love, in whom though now ye see him not, yet believing ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. He said, Christians, I know you're going through trials. They're real. But folks, I'm not making light of our trials. We have heavy trials. We don't face the same kind of trials, but we do have heavy trials in America as well. No, we may not be getting burned at the stake, but the trials you face are very real. Now, getting the wrong sauce on your sandwich, that's not a trial. Amen. Some of the stuff we get upset over, that's not a trial. But there are real trials we face. But folks, for a Christian, all trials are temporary. One day when we leave this world behind, I, I hear people say this, and I understand the thought, but I'm going I'm to try to correct it this morning. I hear people say often, Pastor, I'm going through this time. When I get to heaven, I'm going to ask God why. I'm going to ask God why this happened. I'm going to can I tell you what you're going to do when you get to heaven? You're just going to go get to heaven and go, wow. You're not going to ask why. You're going to say, wow. Right. You won't go, God, why? You're going to go, God, wow. <laughs> I'm forgiven. I'm saved. I'm breathing new life. I'm, I'm a, a child of God. I'll live forever and eternity with the Lord. I'm going to see my loved ones who are saved. Wow. You're not going to do that then. Amen. All your trials are temporary. Amen. But if you're lost, this is as close to heaven as you're ever going to get. Yes. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, this life is the best you're ever going to see. Yes. We as Christians sing amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Praise God. Right. And then we sing the last verse. When we've been there 10,000 years. And that's our way to try to describe it. It's one eternal day. It's eternity. But our way to try to describe it is to say, when we've been there 10,000 years, bright shining as the sun, we've no less days right. to sing God's praise than when we first begun. Right. I mean, it's eternal day. It's eternity. When we get to heaven and go, wow, you know what? forever go wow but if you're lost the opposite is true for you when you've been there 10,000 years when you've been there and it seems like it's been 10,000 years suffering in a place that Jesus prepared for the devil and his angels a real place called hell of darkness and burning and fire a place where, where uh, there's hatred and there's no love and a place where you cry out a place where you're forgotten and forsaken. When you've been there seeming to be 10,000 years, you've only just begun. That's right. Christian, our burdens are real. But let's realize the lost person's burden is eternal. Yes. Yes. We can spend this short window of life going, God, why? God, why? God, why? And there's lost people who are facing an eternity in hell. And we need to instead be seeking to reach them with the gospel. The treasures of this life are temporary for a Christian. The trials of this life are temporary. Number three, our time on earth is temporary. 
The clock is ticking. Every breath you breathe, every tick of your heart brings you one step closer to eternity. As we heard this morning, it doesn't matter what age you are, death comes to all. It comes to the young, it comes to the old, it comes to those in between. Can you tell me when you're going to die, please? No, you can't. I can't tell you when I'm going to die. Are you ready? Well, I'll tell you what, Pastor, I've told you about the young man I talked to. What, what, what are you going to do? He said, I'm, I'm going I'm to get through school and get some really good grades. Great, what are you going to do after that? I'm going to go get my dream job. Great, what are you going to do that? I'm going to work my way up. So I'm making a lot of money and doing really well. Great, what are you going to do after that? And I'm going to retire. Great, what are you going to do after that? Uh, yeah, it's the after that. You better worry about it. Right. By the way, you might not even make it to that point right. in your life. Right. You don't know if you have 20 years, 40, 80, 100. You don't know how much time you have. Every senior citizen, every senior saint in here would tell you that 70, 80 years is nothing. You remember 20 like it was yesterday. I'm not old. I know that. But I look at some things and go, man, that was 25 years ago. I'm not old. I go, it's 25 years. That seems like a long time now, but it's really not. It's here and it's gone. Your time on earth is temporary. The sooner... You young people can wake up and realize your time on earth is temporary. The sooner adults can wake up and say, hey, my time on earth is temporary. The sooner you can get your priorities in order. The Bible says in verse 13, Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ as obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts and your ignorance. But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. And if he call on the Father, who without respect of persons judgeth according to every man's work, pass the time of your sojourning here in fear. You know what sojourning means? It means you're just visiting for a little while. Amen. This world is no one's home. Whether you're saved or lost. This world's not your home. It's not my home. Thank God I'm saved. My home is beyond the blue. My home's in heaven. You're saved. Your home's in eternity with the Lord Jesus Christ. But if you're lost, this earth, this earth is still not your home. Right. You're just passing through. You're just sojourning. You're just visiting for a little while. James 4.14 says, What is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. Right. I went out to Birmingham Forest. This last week, I watched in the beginning of the morning as the sun came and started to heat the moisture on the path. You could just see these little vapor clouds coming up, coming up off the pathway. The Lord just reminded me of that verse again. What is your life? It's just a vapor. It appears for a little time. Your life is lived in that little hash between the date you're born and the date you die. It's temporary. <coughs> Look at verse 24. The Bible says, All flesh is as grass. Hey, I'm the superstar on my basketball team at school. I don't want to depress or disappoint you, but give 20 years from now, nobody will remember your name. There'll be a new superstar. I'm the... I'm not saying this. I'm the prettiest girl in school. <laughs> I hope I didn't do that very well. I really hope I didn't. Guess what? Ten years from now, five years from now, two years from now, they'll be a prettier girl in school. They won't remember your name. I'm the smartest at my job. I'm the best at my job. I'm the smartest in my school. A couple years from now, they won't remember your name. It'll be somebody else. Why? Because life is temporary. All flesh is as grass. 
and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. You go out and see some of these roses outside the church and some of them are just in full bloom and they're just beautiful. Wow. But it's almost a little sad you come back in a week or two and that same flower that was just in beautiful bloom is now shriveled up and the petals have fallen away. God said that's the way your life is. It's as grass. The glory of man is as the flower of grass. The grass withereth and the flower thereof falleth away. Folks, your time on earth is temporary. So very quickly, what is eternal? Let's look at three things from the same passage. The first thing that's eternal. Look at verse 4. The Bible says, To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away. Reserved in heaven for you. First of all, your heavenly inheritance is eternal. That home, that heavenly home, that's eternal. I'm satisfied with just the cottage below. A little silver, a little gold, uh, or maybe a little copper and a little <laughs> zinc. But in that city where the ransom will shine, I've got a gold one that's silver line. Look, I'm not looking for a mansion. I'm looking more for Jesus Christ. But I'm going to tell you something. Our eternal inheritance is just that. It's eternal. Right. It's forever. The Bible says it fades not away. The house up there is not going to fall apart. Those heavenly chariots. Are we going to have chariots? I don't know. I hope we have Mustangs. I don't know what we'll have, though. <laughs> I really don't know. But I just know whatever it is, it's going to be good. Right. And I know whatever it is, it doesn't fade away. That's what I know. All the stuff of this world rusts, it corrupts, it fades away, but your heavenly inheritance is eternal. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there you may be also. Remember, he said, in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I've heard people try to change that. Even some uh, false translations of the Bible, they'll say there's many rooms. In my Father's house are many rooms. Wow. I'm going to have a mansion. Yeah. So yeah, but, but how do you put a mansion in a house? It's a big house. I'm going to tell you right now, he meant mansion when he said mansion. Yeah. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. Yeah. I go to prepare a place for you. If you're saved, your inheritance is eternal. The Bible tells us we are joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Whatever Jesus gets, we get. How is that possible? By the blood of Jesus Christ. It's possible because of His goodness and His mercy and His grace. Next, what's eternal? Your salvation is eternal. Your salvation is eternal. Look at verse number 5. The Bible says, Who are kept by the power of God. You're not keeping yourself saved. Jesus is keeping you. People who believe they can lose their salvation, they're very mistaken. That's not scriptural. You cannot unearn something you never earn. Your salvation is eternal. The Bible says, Jesus said, I give unto them eternal life. Well, if I have something today and lose it tomorrow, is it eternal? No. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Well, if I have it today and lose it tomorrow, is it everlasting? No. But He gives everlasting life. He gives eternal life. Our salvation is eternal. Why? Because we're kept by the power of God. Amen. We're kept by God's power. Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice. And I know them and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life. And they shall never perish. Amen. He says, now I'm forgetting the verse. I want to read it. John 10. I'm going to read it to you. John 10, 27. My sheep hear my voice and I know them. And they follow me and I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. And then Ephesians 1 says you're sealed by the Holy Spirit of God unto the day of redemption. Amen. You're eternally secure. There are places that teach that if, if you're not faithful, 
you'll lose your salvation. Folks, you know what being unfaithful is? It's messing up one time. Have you messed up once since you've been saved? Have you said something you shouldn't have or thought something you shouldn't have or did something you shouldn't have since you were saved? Then you'd be unfaithful. You'd be lost again. But folks, we're not saved because we're keeping ourselves. We're saved because we're kept by the power of God. Amen. 1 John 5.13 says, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. We have everlasting life. We have eternal life through Jesus Christ. Last of all, what's eternal? Look at 1 Peter 1 again, please. Temporary things, treasures of this earth are temporary. That fancy job, that fat wallet, it's temporary. I'm not saying don't enjoy it, but you ought to make sure you're using it for God. Trials of this earth, Christian, are temporary for us. If you're lost, this is the best it's going to get for you. You need to be saved. Christian, your time on earth is temporary. Lost person, your time on earth is temporary. What's eternal? For those of us who are saved, our heavenly inheritance, our salvation, last of all, what else is eternal? This book right here. Yeah. It's eternal. It's eternal. All right. You can decide to live your life based on what the TV tells you. What your favorite rapper, country music star, and Hollywood elitist tells you. Or you can realize that those people are just like that grass. They come, they blossom, and they die. This word's still here. Kings have tried to kill it and burn it and get rid of it. Kings are dead and the word's still here. Right. Politicians have tried to silence it. Public schools have tried to silence it. Right. It's still here. Amen. It's still here. And it will always be here. Amen. Verse 23, how did we get saved? We got saved when somebody preached to us the word of God. Maybe somebody took a gospel track or preached a message. But we heard the Word of God. It wasn't the man who saved us. It was the Word that man or that woman gave us that showed us our need of a Savior. That eternal Word and we got saved. Notice what it says, verse 23. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the Word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. Amen. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. Amen. This book lasts forever. Say, Pastor, I don't like that what you preach. Honestly, can I tell you? I want to say I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> I do care because what I care about is how you are going to give an account of your life to God one day. But I know when I preach this book, I'm preaching the truth. I'm preaching God's Word, whether we like it, whether we don't. I'm preaching God's Word. It's true, and it outlasts all of us. And God didn't ask our opinion when He wrote this book. He didn't say, what do you think? He didn't say, hey, uh, uh, tell, tell me, you give your opinion, we'll put it there. He just said, hey, folks, this is my Word. It's eternal. It's for your blessing. It's to give you the best life you can possibly have. It shows you the way of eternal life. Now will you receive it as it is, the Word of God? It's not my Word, it's God.